everyone, and welcome to the Beginner's Guide to Gamification, episode number 11. This is Yukai Chow, gamification pioneer, occasional Stanford lecturer and keynote speaker. He's also rated on leaderboarded as one of the top five gamification gurus in the world. And most recently, a founding partner of the, the Enterprise Gamification Consultancy. In the last episode, I talked about the third core drive, empowerment of creativity and feedback. And I got a lot of great feedback from it and a lot of people asking me if I can talk more about it. So I'm gonna have another episode just dedicating to this third core drive. To quickly reiterate, empowerment of creativity and feedback is the core drive that gives people the freedom to use the creativity and figure out all types of combos and processes and see feedback and, and you know, constantly adjust it and that motivates people. Another good example of empowerment of creativity and feedback, at least in the scaffolding phase, is draw something. Draw something was fun for a long time because it, it allowed both sides to express their creativity and see immediate results. And so that's what makes the app so sticky for a, through the scaffolding phase. The reason why it eventually dropped off was because of a lack of fresh content in the end game as well as the ability for players to just cheat the system by writing in the correct words. That's another important lesson we learn in gamification. When you have a system, people will try to game it. And if it is gameable, and to, to the point where it's unfair, it demoralizes the experience of all the other players who are just trying to honestly play the game. So whenever you design a system, you gotta make sure, you gotta watch out for, you gotta design in the way that even when people game the system, which a lot of people try to do, it still benefits you and the overall ecosystem, not destroy it. One good example of utilizing empowerment of creativity and feedback is Farmville, actually. Farmville is a pretty boring game, but really matches the core drive. But one of the things that I really endorse about Farmville is they allow people to start creating art with their farm. You know, people paint the Mona Lisa, they create a QR code with their farms, and those are very creative. They're seeing their farm as a canvas and an expressive creativity. I think that's one of the good reasons why people would play Farmville. A lot of the other ones aren't that great. A good way to add empowerment of creativity and feedback into a design is to utilize what I call boosters. Boosters are things you can obtain that make other things more powerful or more efficient. The reasons why boosters are effective is because now users actually have to plan what are the best boosters that can strategically help them to accomplish the win state. An example of this is when users are accumulating points on a site, but there's a way to get special items or accumulate special knowledge scores that actually help them get points faster, boost their, their progress, and this is when players start to strategize and figure out what kind of items to collect or knowledge to, to get in order to optimize on the points they need to get. And that involves people's creativity and they get to see feedback and that engages a lot of people. Another very important thing for the core drive empowerment of, of creativity and feedback is giving people meaningful choices. If you give them a lot of options, a lot of choices to solve a problem, then they feel much better, they actually feel more engaged. Now the best way to install empowerment of creativity and feedback is to give them a lot of options to solve a problem. Give them what I call the general's carrot. What the general's carrot mean is that the, the user is a general. He, ha he has full command over all the different strategies, but he also has a carrot. He knows, he knows the exact goal he wants to accomplish. That process will drive many hardcore players to pull out Excel spreadsheets in order to figure out what is the right combination to optimize what they're trying to do, whether it be skill combination, items, and anything, so that they can really perfect their game. And yes, there are a community of gamers who actually use Excel spreadsheets to play their game better. There should be a Facebook group for that. When a game or a product can get users to pull out Excel spreadsheets, to just figure out how to use the product and play the game better, I would say it successfully uses this core drive pretty well. Another good example of empowerment of creativity and feedback is using all types of crowdsourcing solutions. My favorite crowdsourcing example is the product Folded. So researchers and scientists have been trying to figure out a 
AIDS virus issue about you know how a protein folds, and they couldn't figure it out for 15 years of the top minds in the world trying to figure it out. Um, so they decided to make a game called Fold It, and um, they basically create a protein folding game and they release it to the world and say, hey, you know, whoever wants to play it can play it and see if you can solve a problem. And this problem, again, where people could not solve for 15 years was solved within 15 days. And so that's an amazing example of giving people the ability to try out their creativity and see immediate feedback. And that drives and that makes people relentlessly coming up with more creative solutions. And eventually, you know, you change the world. And life is good. Even in the workplace, if you can engage your workers to empower them to use their creativity and they seek their uh, feedback very quickly, you have to engage workforce. Google's 20% time also allows employees to creatively express what they, what they can do and build amazing things. A very important game technique within empowerment of creativity and feedback is the milestone unlock. The milestone unlock is powerful because when you certainly when you finally hit a certain milestone, it unlocks a new set of possibilities for to use your creativity again and to solve problems in a whole new way. It's like the, uh, the adding new colors and draw something, or getting a different weapon or giving you a skill. But more importantly, it can't just be one new thing. It has to be one new thing that can be combined with other things to create even more interesting and creative solutions. What does that mean? So, in the game Plants vs. Zombies, at the very beginning, you have one plant and you have a set of challenges. And most people, most people set like a milestone before, um, to, to quit a game. So it's like, hey, when I beat the stage, I'm going to quit, right? I'm going to go to bed. But the power of a milestone unlock is whenever you beat a stage, it says, ta-da-da, you've unlocked a new type of plant. You can use a new plant to create new uh, defense lines with, with, your, with your plants, right? And what you'll notice is by design, that plant is oftentimes the exact savior plant that will make the last stage so much easier. Like last stage, you struggled to fight against this new zombie. But this plant is the direct counter to it. So you're like, oh, I wish I had this plant. So I could beat zombies so these zombies so easily. So you want to use this, this. You want to play the next game so that you can um, you can use that new plan to beat those those zombies that give you a lot of trouble. Of course, in the next game, there's going to be a new type of zombie that gives you a new type of trouble. In which case, you have a new plan again. And so that's when people uh, plan to go to bed at 11 a.m. but end up staying till like. 4 a.m. in the morning, still playing, just because they keep hitting these milestone unlocks, unlocking new possibilities to express their creativity and feedback. And it's something that's very, very powerful. The same thing happens with games like Diablo, where you keep playing and, um, and you think, oh, I'm just going to level up. And once I level up, I'm going to uh, go to bed. And when you level up, you learn a new skill. And you're like, oh, of course I need to test the skill. It sounds pretty awesome. So you test, you play with it, you try to complete the next quest, or you see how you, you can incorporate it into that gameplay. And then, you know, then you're like, oh, you're, I'm close to leveling up again. I might as well just level up. And then the same thing happens. So that is very powerful. It's always good to incorporate as many core drives into a design process as possible. And empowerment of creativity and feedback is great because it inspires users to be more involved, be more engaged, and becomes a really good evergreen mechanic that can drive your users through into the end game phase. And always remember the feedback part of empowerment of creativity and feedback. And this ends the Beginner's Guide to Gamification Episode 11. Damn it, the music stopped. But there's nothing to dance to now. Just cut it out for you guys. <laughs> no, this is the best. Are you still filming me? Yeah. Alright, now we're done, Yukai. This is Yukai Chow, and I will see you guys next time!